Jamie, well, you were there at Twickenham, mate. I mean, just talk us through it. That last 10 minutes, I suppose you had your script written, you'd folded your laptop up, you're heading to the press conference again. Good old way to finish the season, All Blacks. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you nailed it there. Um, it, it was all written, um, and it was, it, was, it was a very different um, article than what eventually ended up getting printed, uh, along with the other um, two Kiwi journalists that had made the trip um, over, which is a story in itself. Uh, um, considering the amount of empty seats that were next to us that the RFU had um, left open for the Ooh, New Zealand media that, okay. that they thought were coming. Yeah. Um, anyway. Just, Let's get on to that uh, in a second. Yeah, I do want yeah, to hear about that's, that. That's, yeah. that's, an, that's an aside. Uh, but yeah, on that last 10 minutes, I mean, I I, I really am perplexed at, at what exactly just happened uh, with that, considering how well the bench performance um, pulled that result off against Scotland and Edinburgh, uh, you know, also like what well, it's, it's a, uh, the, this team actually has kind of turned a corner with that game because as sort of disappointing as some of the aspects against Scotland were, it did feel very much like a typical all black performance in which they managed to sort of get themselves out of a hole. Uh, and this one was the complete opposite uh, in that it wasn't a great game. To be honest, like up until the 70th minute mark, there was, I mean, you had a referee who was um, trying to turn it turn into a game of netball and uh, blowing every single penalty he possibly could. Uh, and and so, it, but, but again, it was one of those games where, yeah, okay, forgettable game, but the All Blacks still would have won, it was still heading for a comfortable comfortable victory. And so that's what we've written down. And it was like, this is kind of feeling like the old days. You had uh, one game where they found a way to win and another game where they simply just sat back and let the other team beat themselves because that's kind of what England were doing um, for most of the game. They, they, they went into the 22 plenty of times um, and got absolutely nothing out of it uh, with, with good, really good turnover work um, from the All Black loose forwards. Um, but the the main thing was is that the All Blacks had sort of managed to adapt slightly better to a very pedantic referee and uh, it was showing on the scoreboard. And then with 10 minutes to go, um, it just sort of actually turned into a game of rugby. Uh, and England <laughs> looked like the far better rugby team out there, which was, um, was crazy, really. Uh, and I think uh, one of the main things was, uh, one of the main things, the keys of the All Black success up until that point was they managed to take one of England's best players, fullback Freddie Stewart, completely out of the game by just simply not kicking, them, kicking the ball to him. And then that's all they did for, for 10 minutes. Uh, and um, we saw exactly what happened because uh, one bad kick um, led to the, the try that ended up making it a draw uh, rather than what should have been a win for the All Blacks. Look, and you, you, know, you can you can pick out moments, can't you? But, I mean, you know, we do this with a microscope on every single match. And it was TJ that, that kicked that ball away, which is, I, I'm still sitting here thinking, what the hell are you, what were you thinking? What were you doing, man? But even down to 14 men, we practice for this. We've got to be able to shut a game down. Jamie, the biggest worry for me is we go into a World Cup next year on consecutive Saturdays. This isn't over three weeks, people. This is Saturday, 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 taking place in 14 or 15 days. We're going to have to beat two of the very best, if not three of the very best teams in the world, back to back to back to win. Now, we've got an all-black side and squad that played against Wales. Then the B team comes out against Scotland. Then we put the A team back again against England. We're going to have to play that same team three matches in a row. There's nothing watching that that convinces me that we are capable at this point in time of being able to do that. Yep, agreed, agreed. Um, the, um, the only thing I could really say that would be a positive um, response to that is there's not a lot of other teams in the world that are feeling that uh, any any better uh, as it is. At the moment, France seemed to be the only team that seemed to be capable of consistently winning, while Ireland's, I would, Ireland obviously have been winning as well, but their hopes entirely seem to rest on the form of, um, oh, sorry, the fitness of, of Johnny Sexton. Um, and if anything happens to him, then their fortunes will completely change. Uh, but it's it, it's an interesting one because I, I do think there are some good things to come out of this tour, and when I say that, I mean we probably answered a few questions on a few players um, that are probably either definitely going to be around next year or definitely not. Uh, so, I mean, that's made that selection, a few selection pictures a little bit clearer, um, including... Well, it, 
except except for the one of the one guy who I think can come out of this tour with his head held highest, which is Dalton Papali, uh, who is now in a very interesting situation because um, it's pretty unlikely that he's going to unseat Sam Kane um, from that number seven shirt uh, because. Foster has always shown that he's been very loyal to his veteran players, and he's obviously going to be most loyal to the guy he's picked as captain. So uh, Super Rugby next year is going to be a very interesting um, battle between those two because Papali's really taken his game to the next level um, on this tour. has uh, gone from being a real blue-collar grafter to a guy who's been absolutely dynamic with ball in hand, and you saw that with a like, 60 meter intercept try he got uh, to open the scoring on Saturday night. So... That's that's going to be a really interesting thing uh, thing to watch, I think. All right, then. So <laughs> at the press conference afterwards, I mean, this is you know, you, you you end up being having having to become a great stutter studier of human emotion, of body language, of reading between lines, of facial expressions, of interaction between those at the top table. You got to observe all of that, absorb all of it, and then come out thinking, okay, here's what's been said, but what do they actually mean? And so what are your thoughts immediately? You've had a data process. Yeah, so, I mean, we saw two teams uh, come in, and one was obviously very uh, disappointed in acting like the game was a loss, um, although Foster was very much trying to, you know, play on the positives as he as he usually does and downplay any sort of negative things and try to deflect any sort of criticism. Um, which is uh, just a really kind of an annoying thing that, that he does. Whereas on the other side, we had Eddie Jones, who was you know pretty quick to point out that he didn't really endorse what Marcus Smith did there at the end by kicking the ball out, but at the same time, um, it was pretty obvious he knew that you know he just got out of jail as well because had they had the All Blacks actually done what they were supposed to do there and maybe scored another couple of tries, that could have ended up in a really heavy defeat for England, and he would have been absolutely under the pump again because there's a room full of journalists there ready to knife him um as soon as he walked in had there been you know what could have potentially been a 30 35 point loss uh so you know you could feel the relief um from eddie jones but at the same time you could see he was seeing it very much as an opportunity to um to build on um going into next week because they'll be pretty fired up um to take that kind of form into a, what's going to shape up to be a pretty big game against um the Springboks. Uh, but just back to the All Blacks, though, um, yeah, just really, I think they were really disappointed because they really needed to finish the season with a kind of a statement. Um, we've seen, obviously, on this tour, we saw a really scratchy game against Japan, um, a pretty decent performance against Wales, but, of course, that Welsh team was not very good at all. Um, uh, you know, a, a, like I said, a comeback win against um, Scotland, uh, which, you know, probably should have been put away a lot earlier, considering they actually had a decent lead um, to start that game off. And then this complete capitulation um, against England. So, you know, it's not they didn't really get the really definitive big performance that they really needed out of this tour. So, you know, and I think Ian Foster knew that 